Hi everyone, we're going to do a very quick tutorial today. I've just been doing some research and development for soft body dynamics inside of Maya 2014. And what I'm going to show you today is I've got this craft from Star Trek, the latest Star Trek Into Darkness. And it's a pretty good quality model. And what we're going to do is we're going to make this crash look as realistic as possible, but we're not going to be doing any rendering or or anything today, we're just going to be focusing on the actual physics behind the crash. So, let's get started. We're going to first, when you load it up, it's probably going to come in on this tab. So, you come down and click on N Dynamics, and you'll probably see all these different tabs. And all you want to do is go to our N Cloth one and highlight your imported mesh, and then just come over and click this shirt button. And you'll see that if it's successful, we get like a little forward slash slash result. And if you come over and click on it now, um, if you can't get into, let me show you, if you can't, if, you, if your screen's like this, just come up and click this button. And this is your attribute editor. And this will open everything that your mesh is getting like driven towards. So come over to your end cloth shape. And the first thing we want to do is just turn this rig rigidity up. And this will just make the craft look like a craft, like a nice hard shell around it, rather than just crumpling like a piece of cloth. So, once you've done that, we want to come back up here and go to our nucleus. And everything's just going off. Alrighty. Now, once you've done this, just set your time scale up to 1. And all we want to do is increase our wind speed to about 19 this is our probably our first one and if you right mouse click on it just set a key because we're going to need this to have a bit of a key and this wind speed will be driving this and we want to control our direction of our craft so we want to make this go in the left position towards the z-axis so I think putting a 1 in this box will get the job done for us Excellent. All right. So let me just chuck this into the cache. Oh, and another quick thing. You just want to come in here and click use plane as well. So this will just use this temporary plane for us to, to test with. So, okay, make sure that's on. And now if you come down and press the play button, it will take a little bit, but you'll see that the craft starts to move now. And it, it'll when it comes into contact with the ground it will crash but we're gonna focus on getting some nice rumples and stuff from like a proper landing so as you can see it's coming it's coming and crash and it bounced so we're just gonna have to fix up a couple of those things but it's gonna come and skid to a halt now you'll notice if we press an escape button and we come back to the start, we play it again, it's going to have to re-simulate that whole thing. Now what I'm going to be doing through this, I'm going to be pausing the video so you don't have to sit through me simulating it every time. So all you have to do is whenever you want to preview this over and over again, just come up and click create new cache and then just say, I've already done this once, so just say replace existing. And then the computer will come through and pretty much add this into a temporary file so you won't have to keep going back and replaying it and replaying it and wasting all your time. So you'll only have to do this once for each time you change a setting. So if you want to preview a setting over and over again, you're better off to come up and just create a cache and then you'll be fine. So it's coming, it's crashing, it bounces. So what I'm probably going to do after this simulation is kind of twist it a bit to kind of look like the pilot's trying to avoid crashing but of course it's gonna crash and then kind of get like a roll a roll out of it. So as you can see he's kind of skimming, skimming through it. So he's skimming, he's going, he's going. It's good that we set it to about 143. And I might also put down just a plane, a simple polyplane. That way we can just put some friction on the ground. I think that would be good. Alright, we're almost there. 
130, 132, 133. So you can see why I'm going to pause it with the next ones, otherwise it would be taking a lot of time. Okay. Perfect. So this is where our craft finished. Now if we come back and play. Now this is also to do with our wind up here. Our wind set at a constant 19, like pretty much set ratio. So all we have to do now is we have to kind of, what I usually do, so let's come in here and we'll just kind of twist the craft to kind of look like the pilot's banking. So he's trying to avoid it. And let's just come in here and delete the cache. So that means it's going to re-simulate it again. And let's right mouse click and come up to Nucleus. And let's just increase this initial value to about 25. And click out, click back in, and you've got all those things again. And then come back to your Nucleus. So now we've got 25. And you could have just right mouse clicked and set, set key, but that's handy to know this one Other when you get into all these values that so you can come in and see at different times when you have different values. Okay. All right. So let's simulate this forward until it hits the ground. There we go. Okay. So it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Just get ready to pause it. Get ready to pause it. Get ready to pause. Now, just looking at this initial spin, I want to kind of make it more like that. Okay, let's just re-simulate. Uh, okay, it's looking much better. So, when it's going to come in and look like it's going to do a roll. So just before it hits the ground, we want to come in and set a new key to wind speed of like about 2, and then a few frames later to 0. So you'll see why in a second. So it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Okay, pause. So now come up and just make it like about 3, and right mouse click set key, and then let it keep going forward a bit. And then make it zero. And set key. Now, just looking at that, I wanted to actually make this make it maybe ten, just to give it a bit of a slowdown. Use the speed. Sorry, to speed it up a bit. Okay. Now, quickly, I just want to come up to polygons and then just lay down a quick grid. And let's just come up to polyplane and turn up our subdivisions. Hold down your right mouse button and click face. And I'm thinking let's just make like a little mound. Uh, let's just grab this, this stuff, yeah. And let's just make it look like it's going to finish, like around here. Awesome. Okay. Now let's come back to our object mode, right mouse click again. And let's just make a, a circle, a sphere, sorry. And let's come up here. And let's edit. And I just want to make it extrude. There we go. Edit mesh, extrude, and oops. There we go. Cool. Actually. Uh, yeah, just kind of make it a bit sci-fi, like what's this thing doing here, okay, that'll do, alright, now, the important thing is that we've put this into the scene, so we have to come up and make this a 
rigid body. So click that one and click this one. Now let's just come and I'm going to just add this to cache to see what we've got. And I'll pause the video just so you don't have to sit through it. I'll be back in a sec. Back and I just finished simulating that into the cache. So let's just play it back. And at the moment, it's looking pretty good. Come back, and we've got it nicely coming in. You know, we've got some interpenetration going on here, but we'll fix that up later. But I'm kind of happy with this at the moment. I am thinking that I'm going to pump this the wind up just a bit at the start, just to get it a bit more like ferocious. And I might move the starting position over a bit, so let's just kind of delete the cache. And I just want to spin this around a bit more, like a bit more like that. And it's just all about playing with these values, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay, 34. Let's make this about 34. And I want to make it when it hits the ground, maybe it's about 20. And then a few frames later, let's make this. Make this about 60. Alright. Perfect. Alright, let me just give this another quick simulator for you and we'll get back. Place existing. Perfect. And as you can see we've got the ship kind of crashing in a bit more now. And I think it's looking it's looking much better. I think it's a much more believable speed that it's coming in. So what I'm thinking is I kind of want it to kind of tumble. So I'm just trying to get this. And in some cases, to make it tumble, we really need to come in to this end cloth shape. And come and edit these settings in here. So let's just come and zoom in on, on the ship. Here, yeah, perfect. All right, now let's come to solver display. And if we come up to collision thickness you see it's highlighted with this yellow and as we increase this this is what its interpenetration will be so this is the ship and this yellow bit signifies what the collision it's going to affect so ultimately you want it skinnier but for wings like this we need to pump it up to about the original it was originally at 0.11 but we want to make it about 0.55 and this will just make it a little bit thicker and a little bit more believable. Okay. Now I think it's start. It's time to start making it behave like a soft body. So let's come in here, and you'll notice that we made this rigid. So let's make this a set key at frame one, and we'll just quickly come through. back up a couple and let's just make this about zero now make that zero but we want to make this high so this technically is not rigid but soft rigid and it's kind of hard to explain until you see it so let's just come up and perfect so that's going to work Alrighty, so let's end cache. Oh, and we just want to make this um, a little bit more frictiony. This this surface here, and you can see this is the same as well. We've got a collision thickness going on here as well, and you can customize the color if you want to make it stand out more for you. But personally, I like yellow, so I'll leave it like that, and we'll turn this off. Alrighty, boy, let's get you delete create new cache, replace existing, and I'll pause it and we'll come back when it's done. As we're back and I've just finished simulating this one and as you can see we've got some nice ripples going on here when it crashes. So let's come back and analyze this. So as it comes into crash, uh, as it comes in the crash, the wing crumples, and then the shockwave pushes through the ship and bends it. Mm. 
looks pretty pretty nice and then slumps up here now of course since this is um got a high collision mesh you turn this up you can see how that bends but if we turn this down a bit to make it more streamlined then that'll look a much better okay so we still have a little bit more work to do I kind of want to make it it kind of seems a bit unrealistic as it just slides along so what I want to do is come in here to our wind speed and maybe make this about 15 as it comes through I think that'll be good and make this about 30 I might twist this a little bit more like like that because I kind of want it to come and hit here and I just want to come in here to mesh and hold down the space bar you can to get in here just hold down the space bar mesh click on it hold and go smooth so now we've got this looking a bit smoother and I'll do the same for this mesh awesome so what I want to do is just bring this over here so there's like a bit hanging out that the ship might hit into if that looks like it's going to be on the same path I might just expand this a bit this is really just acting as like a temporary object that we can sh see what the simulation is going to do so highlight the object, come up to the solver, delete the solver, it's just a lot of this, replace existing and let it do its thing it's gonna fall and this time hopefully react a bit dynamically now as you can see we've got this the form resistance and this is basically driving how much this crumples so if this was to this would only really dent when it hits the ground but since it's at about 1.26 it's really going to bend and mold to where it gets hit. Now it could depend on different materials that you're wanting. For really really hard metals you probably set it to like 2.3 I'm thinking. I'm thinking that probably be the best number for that. And my favorite feature about this is the the used polygon shells. Now the best thing about this is it actually breaks apart your, your mesh into different pieces for when what you've made now just going back to this it looks like it's actually going to hit this front on so we'll see what happens <laughs> yeah but th this polygon shell it actually breaks apart so it looks like the piece is exploding everywhere which is a really nice effect I quite like it and awesome we'll just leave this to do its thing and I have no idea how this is going to turn out. It's probably going to spasm out because there's no way for it to go. But we will see. Let's just pause it now. See what happens. Now, this is how powerful this this program really is because this is pretty much just all dynamic. It's done this all itself. You gotta love Maya. Alright, let's just bring this back. So, it comes down, smash. But, I really just want to move this over so it clumps. Uh, that probably, that's probably going to be better. Alright. Like a little hidden danger in the ground there. Awesome a little bit higher. Fantastic. Okay, let's just come back up here, make this this one, delete the cache, create new cache. And let me just show you, if we make this the form resistance like 1.5, this will make a big difference. Let's just delete this, replace existing. I'm just going to pause it and we'll see what happens in a bit. This just finished simulating, so let's have a look.
That looks pretty sweet. It's looking a lot better. It just comes in and crashes into this bit. Now I think what would really help this a lot is if we turned up the wind a bit more here to just help it ridge over and continue rolling and then it will deform this right bit and just really bring the whole piece together. So which frame are we on? Let's go to the wind. We're on frame 69. So on frame 60 it's zero. And really, we want to make this pump up again. So let's make this 20. And hopefully that will give it enough push to get over. And let's make 92. Let's go back here. Let's make 92. Just zero to stop it. I think that will be perfect. Now let's just turn up the wind noise a little bit to 0.47. And let's just have a look at what that does. So, delete cache, create new cache, replace existing, and let's pause it. So we just finished simulating this like final render, or simulation. And I'm really happy with these results at the moment. So it crumples and slides down quite nicely. But I'm thinking that I just want to make the surface a little bit more frictiony. So let's just come in, turn the friction up on that, and let's just turn the friction up on our ship. Now let me just re simulate this one. I'm simulating this to 137. And Look how good that looks. It's just sticking, it falls, and turns over beautifully. That is looking great. Now, this is probably going to be your favorite part of the tutorial, is turning on this function, the use polygon shells. Like, you'll probably want to do this whenever you do it. However, this particular effect, I think, is quite realistic. I'd probably just come in and detach these couple of polygons if I was doing this in a production um, environment. But if we turn on these used polygons, basically from frame one, it's as if it gets hit, gets hit by a laser, so it will just explode into pieces. So let's just click this, and I'm just going to quickly save my file. Let's turn this into an ASIC. And I'm just going to call this R and D Maya Ship Soft Body. Perfect. Now, let me just delete this and I'll start again. Okay, now you can see as soon as I press simulate, all of the pieces that have been attached are now falling off as if it's been hit by a laser. This is falling, this is falling, our landing gears are falling, and this is going to react dynamically as well. So these bits are going to bend when they hit the ground as well, just like we've said in our deform resistance. So it bent, it broke apart, broke apart. These bits are breaking, and they bend as well. You can see this one bend and shifted. And now the main body is also going to bend and shift as well. You can see it's deformed. And it's going to flip over and finish where we stopped our last simulation. So basically you want to simulate the first bit, just get the whole body set up. And then we can go in and turn on use polygon just to add that little bit of extra damage. I'm still working on trying to get this to turn on mid animation. So as soon as it hits, then we activate this. If anyone has a suggestion for that, that would be amazing because I've been trying to get this particular thing to work. I might end up just writing a script for it, which will benefit a better, quite a lot of people because I think this is a very powerful technique to getting a good, good physical explosion without using a um, bullet or anything. 
and you also get nice ripples where the bullet only does rigid rigid body dynamics but with end cloth we can use soft body and the best thing about this is we can also once we've done we've applied we've made this and it's in the cache we can apply a bullet solver to it to interact with a rigid body dynamic so then this can come and affect the building this for, for example or we could fracture this break this apart then recache this with the broken pieces so that these pieces interact with the broken pieces it's just a really complicated process but in the end it just creates more and more and more realism so this is just settling we've only got about 30 more frames to go and the tutorial is looking very nice and to finish it off I'm just gonna play bass blast it and I'll make a quick camera just to add a bit of excitement to the final shot so eight frames it's almost done it's all settled and done look at that so now we've got some little broken chaos bits and look at how detailed we can get this will look extremely nice when we have some global illumination in the scene alrighty so we've got our final ship I'm just gonna play blast it and this has pretty much been the tutorial so if you wanna know anything else just message me or leave a comment below our competition for our daily t-shirt giveaway is still running so you still have the chance to win uh... fantastic i hope you have enjoyed this tutorial please like favorite and subscribe and i will be seeing you tomorrow